Hello, my name is Rafaela lipinski Get, and I'm an internal medicine resident at UCSF. As part of our series, The Five-Minute Hospitalist, I'll be talking about the evaluation of chest pain and an elevated troponin in the hospitalized patient. So the objectives for this talk, first are to discuss the basic differential of chest pain um, in these patients, and we'll also talk about the initial workup for new chest pain. We'll learn to interpret an elevated troponin and distinguish between a type 1 and type 2 myocardial infarction. Starting off by co with common causes of chest pain among hospitalized patients. So the first system that many of us jump to is thinking about the cardiac system. We want to rule out an acute coronary syndrome, which can be life-threatening. Now, patients with pre-existing angina can have their anginal symptoms while in the hospital as well. PE should always be on the top of your list in hypercoagulable patients, but really any patient who's hospitalized is probably immobile, and so PE is a, is a possibility. There's a wide variety of things that can cause pleuritic chest pain, um, one of which is a pulmonary infection that's irritating the pleura. And then you can also consider benign causes of chest pain, such as musculoskeletal causes and GERD, um, once you rule out anything life-threatening. And I'll just mention that other life-threatening causes of chest pain, such as aortic dissection, tamponade, pneumothorax, can all occur in the right patient who is hospitalized, um, but generally they have some predisposing condition or have undergone some sort of procedure um, that could trigger that. So the basic evaluation of chest pain is focused on ruling out first dangerous causes of chest pain. So you do your initial assessment as you usually would, starting with vital signs. Um, one example of abnormal vital sign um, that could help you with your differential would be an elevated blood pressure that could suggest a uh, hypertensive emergency causing an acute coronary syndrome. Examination is useful. If the pain is uh, reproducible with palpation, it does make musculoskeletal causes higher up on your differential, but it shouldn't rule out any kind of coronary uh, trigger for chest pain, and you still want to do the rest of your workup looking for any kind of coronary ischemia as you normally would. An EKG can show you any ischemic changes, and then you can get basic labs, including a troponin, um, to look for any kind of myocardial infarction or ischemia. Um, chest x-ray is usually helpful, and then you can consider a CT angiogram to look for pulmonary embolism if that's high on your list. So uh, next up, we'll talk about how to interpret that troponin if it comes back elevated. So just as a reminder, a troponin is a cardiac enzyme that's released uh, during any kind of myocardial injury or infarction. It starts to rise about two or three hours after um, any kind of infarction event. Now, um, I'll be talking a lot about definitions from the fourth universal definitions of myocardial infarction from um, the ACC AHA that was released in 2018. So the first step once you get an elevated troponin is really to trend it. You're looking to see if there's any kind of dynamic rise or fall. If there is, this is suggestive of acute myocardial infarction. Um, and I just want to mention, every time you order a troponin, you should also be getting an EKG to look for any kind of ischemic changes. If with that first troponin, the EKG looks concerning or the patient's having a suggestive uh, symptoms of uh, acute coronary syndrome, you should proceed directly to treatment um, and not necessarily wait for a repeat. Um, but let's say that that's not the case, you're trending the troponin um, and it's changing, so considering acute myocardial infarction. Um, there's different kinds of things that fall under this category. Uh, there's actually many different types and I'll be focusing on two here. The first, type 1 MI is acute coronary syndrome, what we usually think about as heart attacks. Type 2 MI is demand ischemia. Now, if you have an elevated troponin that's not dynamically changing, this is suggestive of myocardial injury without true infarction. This can happen acutely, patients with acute decompensated heart failure, or myocarditis is another great example where patients may have markedly elevated troponin um, that's not uh, significantly changing. And then uh, patients, some patients will have a chronically elevated troponin, some folks with CHF or CKD. I want to focus a bit more on those two types of acute myocardial infarction and how to distinguish them. So the type 1 or acute coronary syndrome is what we think about when we think about a heart attack. This is a plaque rupture or erosion from a thrombus um, that's causing some sort of um, interluminal um, occlusion um, in the coronary arteries. Um, so 
traditionally been taught that a fully occlusive thrombus causes more intense ischemia and more EKG changes, um, and so causes a STEMI, and a non-occlusive thrombus causes an NSTEMI. In reality, there's probably a lot of overlap here, um, so you can't necessarily predict exactly what the, the culprit lesion is going to look like by the EKG changes. But in general, these patients, they have elevated troponin that's dynamically changing, they have EKG changes, and they have symptoms. So these are things like chest pain, pressure, shortness of breath, nausea. Um, of course, that requires them to be conscious, but usually if they are, they're, um, they're having some sort of ischemic symptoms. Now, on the other hand, we have a type 2 myocardial infarction, which is a supply and demand imbalance in the heart. Most often, we see this in patients with pre-existing coronary artery disease who have an increase in uh, oxygen demand of their heart. So, for example, if you have a patient who is, uh, has an infection with a surge response, has tachycardia, but also flow-limiting lesions, this could cause some myocardial ischemia as the heart is not able to keep up with that increased um, oxygen demand. So you'll hear this called demand ischemia. As a note, um, some people refer to this as type 2 NSTEMI. That is incorrect. An NSTEMI always refers to a plaque rupture or erosion, um, so a type 1 myocardial infarction. Um, and a type 2, uh, this is called a type 2 myocardial infarction or demand ischemia. You can see other things that are in this category, vasospasm, dissection, or just supply demand imbalance. But most of the time, we're thinking about patients with pre-existing coronary artery disease who have some sort of underlying um, inciting event that's causing them to not be able to keep up with their oxygen needs. Um, these patients uh, may not have any symptoms, um, or they may just be having symptoms of whatever underlying illness they're having. This is important because the treatment is very different. Um, so for type 1 myocardial infarction, this is where you're doing the full ACS treatment. So giving antiplatelet, anticoagulating, a beta block or a statin, and even calling the cath lab if appropriate. Um, whereas for type 2 myocardial infarction, you're just really trying to address that underlying trigger, that sepsis that's causing them to be tachycardic, for example. So in conclusion, when evaluating new chest pain in the hospitalized patient, you should consider a life-threatening cause such as acute coronary syndrome or pulmonary embolism. You should always order an EKG when you draw a troponin and trend this troponin and EKG to determine whether there's an acute myocardial infarction or just myocardial injury. Use symptoms and EKG changes to determine whether a dynamically changing troponin is consistent with a type 2 MI, acute coronary syndrome, or type 2 MI, demand ischemia, and treat as appropriate. Hope this is helpful. Thank you.